when Daher asked if I would be interested in flying along during a ferry flight of a new TBM 910 single-engine turboprop from France to California, of course I jumped at the chance. It would be midwinter, the worst time of the year for such a trip, and we had a long way to fly from the Daher factory in Tarbes, France, to Iceland and over Greenland, then across Canada to Camarillo, California. Plan on four or five days, I was warned. The destination was Daher distributor Avex, which had ordered November 910 Gulf Echo, a new TBM 910. Expert ferry pilot Gilles Glatz, who flies as many as 30 or 40 of these kinds of trips per year, kindly assented to me joining him on this trip. We took off from the Daher factory on a midwinter Monday evening, headed for our first stop and overnight in Prestwick, Scotland. The interior was still protected with floor coverings and plastic over the seats. Our emergency equipment included a life raft, two survival suits, and our winter wear. The TBM 910 features a full complement of Garmin G1000 NXI avionics with synthetic vision, iridium data link, digital radar, and much more. The engine is a dependable 850 shaft horsepower Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6-66D. With a maximum fuel payload of 891 pounds, we had plenty of capacity when taking off with a full load of fuel, which is 291 gallons or 1,980 pounds. Published range for the TBM 910 is 1,730 nautical miles. The 783 nautical mile flight to Prestwick took just over three hours due to strong headwinds during the first half of the flight. We leveled off at 28,000 feet, cruising at just over 300 knots while burning 55 gallons per hour with a cabin altitude of 8,400 feet. The setting sun lit up the western horizon with a rainbow of orange hues deepening to purple as we descended into Prestwick, where the wind was calm. After a short ride the next morning to the airport, the friendly staff at the executive FBO helped us load up the TBM. They had already fueled it, so once again, it was a prompt launch with no delays, this time for what should have been a relatively short hop to Reykjavik, Iceland. The weather was benign, but extremely strong headwinds slowed our progress. Flying long distance is a lot of straight and level with the autopilot on, monitoring the airplane and in this case, managing the all-important fuel resource as we faced headwinds more than 100 nautical miles an hour. We attempted to mitigate these effects as much as possible by descending, climbing, and descending again. Finally, we skimmed over the snow-dusted rooftops of Reykjavik and touched down on an ice-free runway 19 in excellent visibility and high clouds, still with nearly 80 gallons of fuel on board. Without wind, the flight would have taken 2 hours and 39 minutes, but it took us 3 hours and 47 minutes to fly the 850 nautical miles. We were about to fly our longest leg, 1,207 nautical miles over Greenland to Equaluit on Baffin Island, but at least the winds didn't look bad, and we even expected some tailwinds over Greenland. When we landed in Equaluit, we had flown 4 hours and 25 minutes, but still had 70 gallons of fuel. When we opened the door to head to the FBO, we were faced with minus 27 degree centigrade gusty weather and the wind almost blew me over as I climbed out onto the snowy ramp. The FBO office beckoned, but oddly we could see no lights. We trudged through thick snow drifts to the door and it was locked. No warm office for us. The fuel truck pulled up and two courageous linemen dressed in thick, full-body cold weather suits quickly topped off the TBM. We didn't want to dally in a qualuit because if we stayed there too long, we'd run the risk of the airplane icing up and cold soaking the engine, in which case we'd have to stay overnight and pay to hang or the TBM. Thank goodness for the heated seats. After takeoff from a qualuit, we climbed to 26,000 feet where the wind was back on the nose. Hudson Bay is massive and it took what seemed like endless hours to cross the frozen lumpy expanse. Although it was midwinter, long open cracks in the ice zigzagged tens of miles into the distance. 
We'd hoped to make it all the way to Winnipeg, but ended up landing in Churchill, which took three hours and 28 minutes. Thankfully, the FBO was open. One more short leg and we would call it a day. We spent as little time as possible in Churchill, where the outside temperature was a balmy minus 21 degrees centigrade, much more comfortable and less windy than Aqualuit. It was just another two hours and 18 minutes to Winnipeg. After what seemed like hours of emptiness, occasional signs of civilization appeared. Tiny towns, many with airports, gradually passing by as we motored on into the sunset. By the time we landed, we had logged nearly 14 hours flying and made it from Prestwick to Winnipeg in one day. Glatz and I celebrated the long day's work with a well-deserved steak and beer dinner at the Keg Steakhouse. The TBM was fueled and ready the next morning, so we took off soon after arriving at the airport and headed for the border and our custom stop at Williston, North Dakota. This was a relatively short leg, just 273 nautical miles, and took less than an hour and a half, after which we headed to Fillmore, a small town 100 miles south of Salt Lake City. Fillmore is one of those typically barely used airports that dots the U.S. landscape populated with a few airplanes and a hangar trustingly left unlocked for visiting pilots. The fuel is all self-serve. We topped off the tanks, enjoying for the first time warm sunny weather and the unobstructed view of the snow-capped mountains to the east. For the final leg of the trip, we had plenty of fuel and calm winds. All too soon, it was time to descend toward Camarillo Airport and Glatz brought the TBM to a gentle landing on runway 26, just 23.5 flying hours from our departure in France only two days previously. It was hard to believe we had flown 5,400 nautical miles in such a short time, but that is the life of a ferry pilot. On such a long trip, the TBM 910 really proved its capabilities and reliability. The airplane's handling is solid and sure-footed and it delivers on the manufacturer's promised performance numbers. For an owner, pilot, or commercial operator needing speed and a pleasant flying experience, the TBM 910 is an excellent candidate. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Also, visit AINonline.com and check out our e-newsletters for all the latest on the aviation industry.